It would always have been a very controversial case for Iceland uh, negotiating with the EU because of our vital imp interests in fisheries and uh, agriculture and, and other sectors. Now, question about following rules. I mean, once you know uh, how they are, once you have a clear interpretation th that is not disputed, we are talk no one is talking about anything else except following them. But there is a, a dispute here, there is a legal dispute here, and that needs to be sorted out. Because as I say, nowhere in this directive does it stand that there is a sovereign, there is a state guarantee behind the depositor guarantee system. All right, well, and we'll, I'm not we'll sure that the, that the European nations yeah, would well, like you, you, a court you, ruling you, stating you, that. You've explained that and you, you, you try to tell me that's simply a technical difference and that the European Union application presumably will go ahead. But let's just get down to the nitty gritty. You personally think it would be a mistake, don't you? Even though your government supports application and membership, you personally, as a senior minister, the finance minister, think it would be a mistake to be in the EU. Yes, I, I and my party, we don't think it would be overall beneficial for Iceland to, to join. That has been our view, uh, our estimation. Uh, however, we realize that this question has to be solved. We need to get to the bottom of it. How will the future relations between Iceland and the EU be? In what form? Is it going to be a similar form as we have today, the EAA agreement? where we are members of the, of the inner market, more or less, but, but not a full member. So we can have our fisheries <laughs> and agriculture yeah. and uh, other well, things uh, exactly. uh, Let, let's managed go, in our way. Let's go through the or list is it of going reasons. to be a full membership? Let's go through the list of reasons why, it seems to me, many Icelanders are thinking that this idea of EU membership is, is frankly insane. Number one, you've explained how your economy picked up over the last three years uh, in large part because of a massive devaluation of your currency. Well, you can't do that if, as you say, you, the government says it wants to go into the Eurozone. You can't do that anymore. You're talking about radical reform of your banking system. Well, if you're in the EU, you'd have to play by the EU's rules, so you couldn't do that on your own either. And then you get to fisheries, 200-mile fishing limit Iceland has, exclusive rights within that zone, a massively successful fishing industry. That would go too. So tell me exactly why anybody in your country thinks it would be good to be in the EU now? Well, of course, we are closely integrated with our EAA agreement. As I said, we are part of the inner markets and we pick up a, a lot of the European rules and regulations, as we have just discussed regarding the depositor guarantee systems. So we are integrated in many ways. The question is whether that is the way to, 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 go, to go or to become a full member. Uh, Europe if, is, of course, by far our biggest market. We ex uh, about 70% of our exports go goes to Europe. We are a European nation, so how we uh, build up our contacts with Europe is an important issue that we need to uh, have a clear view on. Isn't the Therefore, truth, Mr. Sigfusson, that you signed up to a government uh, which officially wanted to join the European Union, not because you believed in it, just because you wanted a senior post in Cabinet and you wanted your left green coalition, your party, to be allowed into the coalition. It was pure politics. You don't believe in this at all. We decided to put it to Parliament, whether there was a majority in Parliament to apply, and so it turned out to be, and then we said, we, then we will, as a government, be fully committed to that process, we will negotiate, and at the end of the day, it's up to the Icelandic people to decide. That's a democratic way to settle a question like that. And the so polls, we are in the that polls, process. The polls, uh, maybe I'm misreading them, but the polls seem to me to suggest that at least 60% of Icelanders consistently <laughs> over the last two years have said, no, they don't want to be in the European Union. Am I missing something? No, no, you are right. The, there is a strong opposition. And as I said in the very beginning of this discussion, this is a controversial case and was always bound to be so. And uh, no doubt, some of the recent events uh, in Europe and in our contacts with Europe have not helped uh, support for membership. I'm referring to the quarrels we had regarding ISM. I'm referring to the problems that the euro is facing. And I think it will, at the end of the day, influence the debate in Iceland how successful the euro area is to solve its problem. Yeah. Um, why is the mood in your country so sour when in many ways one could argue that you dodged a bullet. You had a f total financial catastrophe and yet, in part thanks to support from outside, your economy is recovering, living standards are beginning to recover, and yet the public mood is angry and sour. Why? 
Well, that's a good question. Obviously, this was a tremendous shock to Iceland. We had been living very, or we thought we were very rich, and the standard of living was going up, and and uh, we, we had a, a big party in Iceland uh, after the millennium and up to 2008. So it was a big shock to Icelanders to uh, wake up one morning and, and, and our prime minister at that time was on TV telling us that, that the country might, might become bankrupt. Uh, and uh, so, so it was a big change. And then a lot of people are hurt. I mean, a lot of innocent people that carry no responsibility here except go to work every morning, live in their house and try to deal with their mortgages. Are, are taking yeah, the you, pain. You keep saying so, that, so that the, these people bear no responsibility, they're all innocent. Is that then an indication that you believe that it's right to push ahead with legal uh, proceedings against your former Prime Minister, who we had on this show a few uh, year or two ago, Geir Hardy, and indeed hundreds of other people, bankers, politicians, civil servants, who appear to be under investigation by your special prosecutor. Do you personally want to see individuals put behind bars, for example, well, that uh, is being dealt with according to our law and our constitution, and that is the only way to sort things like that out. You have to stick to the law uh, and, and juridical state. No, I know, but uh, I'm just asking a more philosophical point. Do you think it will be important to get rid of this sour mood, this anger in Reykjavik and Iceland? It will be important to see people punished and maybe imprisoned. Well, justice has to be done. I, I does not look at it as a sacrifice or, or, or punishment to make people at ease with things. I think obviously we need to, as a society, work through this by, by getting these things behind us and, and start to fo focusing on the future. Uh, it will take time. It was a big uh, psychological, uh, political shock that, that hit Iceland. So uh, as I analyze the situation today, our economy is definitely improving, improving and recovering, uh, and economically things are looking better and better. So the problem as it stands today is maybe only 25% economical, but 75% uh, mental, psychological, uh, in political. Well, interesting, interesting we you say that. Let me just quote to you the words of Erico Bergman, a political scientist who's been looking at the work of the Truth Committee that you've had. You referred to it earlier. He says that what we've learned is yeah. that in Iceland we've had a mix of, quote, greed, incompetence, nepotism, nationalism, youthful risk-taking, and a kind of collective superiority complex. He says, the truth is we in Iceland lost sight of our roots and our values. If that's true, can you recover them? Well, yeah, unfortunately, there's a lot of truth in that. And we, we have to, as I say, we as a people have to uh, honestly face that, that we, uh, we, we went off track, completely off track in many ways. And it's not just a question about the responsibility of the, of the leading politicians, bankers and businessmen. We as, a, we as a people also need to look this in the eye. That does not mean that the ordinary people are, are responsible or guilty for anything in that sense. But uh, obviously many joined in, even the media and the big parliamentary investigation explains this very well. Uh, how is this dealt with? Well, as I say, we have to follow the law, uh, law and the rules, and those who are responsible have to shelter that responsibility, not because we want to punish them as such specifically, but because that's how our law and constitution works. And then right. we as people need, need to uh, All right. join our forces. We have made a lot of progress. We have, paid, we have sacrificed, but now the Stay. outlook is improving. Yeah. So let's focus on, on the future. And Iceland has tremendous potential. Well, we have, to leave, we have to leave that thought hanging in the air. But Stengrimer Sigfusson in Reykjavik, thanks very much for being on Hard Talk.